Heat race number one, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, the dwarf car. On track now, this is the entire field, I believe, of dwarf cars. We've got one going through the infield. Sorry, we had to rearrange our courts here. And out to the lead in the front of the pack, number 29. Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's pulling up the names right now. He actually delayed the show, believe it or not, because he had to put cameras all around the track. And they made a big deal out of it, and rightfully so. like the leader, the number 29 machine of Corey Brown. There we go, sounds like we got the name. Hey, how's it going everybody? XN coverage with low budget TV out here at Arizona Speedway. The Dwarf Cars, this is the one and only heat race for the Dwarf Cars. Battle for third right now, it's a good one. Battle for fourth. But it has been a good I one. I haven't had to count all off season and you're already doing this to me? That's Rob Deans, who's taken over the fourth position. Still a little bit under fire, however. What a beautiful sunset here at Arizona Speedway. Queen Creek, Arizona. And what a beautiful day it has been here, too, Tommy. Really, it's kind of picture-perfect weather, especially when you consider that we're still in the middle of January. 75 degrees, a high today. That's Cyrus in the number 53 machine looking at the inside of the 99 of Deans. Talked a little bit to Cyrus earlier. He was ready to go tonight. Kind of a four car pack of racing right there. Also in that pack, the number 09, that's Tim Cutherman. White flag coming out for your leader. And he's got a pretty big lead, about a straightaway lead over the second spot. Yeah, Corey Brown, that 29 car. Now you wonder though, because this is the one and only heat race, Tommy, uh, you wonder a little bit about how drivers are taking to it. Are they just using this as kind of a warm-up session right now for the main event? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so Corey Brown will be the first to cross the line. He'll win the first heat race of the year for Low Budget TV. How about that? That's, that's a feat. He should get a trophy. He might. That's a good way to get things started here. Arizona Speedway, January 17th, 2015, in case any of you forgot. I forgot. I had to read. On the point, the number 59, Mark Stewart. On the inside of row number one, outside the 1X, Don Irvin, X04, Mike Strobel. The 56, Norman J.R. Uptain. The 6 of Eric Center. The 4AZ, John Morris Jr., Scott Francoeur, and T. Side by side for the lead. It's going to be Stewart leading the field for the first lap. Started on the pole. Three wide into turn number one. You see them all spread out top to bottom. And they're staying three wide through one and two. But the number four, the X4, into the third spot battle for the lead throwing up here but great racing all throughout i i apologize that is a 4az of morris jr and we will be having a b main tonight tommy we're gonna verify with the officials right here in a bit but everywhere we've been it's the top three transfer so right now that's the spot we're gonna have to keep on eye on that's morris jr who holds it right now in the 4az machine the green one down the back straight away until this year how busy Arizona is this, this is, time of year. This is where the snowbirds flock to. We got them all over the place. Alaska, Missouri, all through the Midwest, the Southwest Regional represented out here. And this is the only type of racing for, the, this is the only area for racing. In this season in Arizona, heck, this is probably the only time you want to race in Arizona. It's when true. it's a nice, very 80 true. degrees. It only gets hotter from the here. So leading the way 
in this one, the 1X machine, started on the outside of road number one of Don Irvin. You're both there in the second spot, Mark Stewart. Here comes Morris Jr. Looking to the inside for the second spot. One car in the wall down the back straight away is the X04. So Keeps that's it going, just a little tap, shouldn't really affect his race. Mark's, Mike Strobel, I don't see too much damage. Yeah, right in the middle of the turn, Tommy, the car caught, it went forward, he had to catch it a little bit. Out of turn number four, your winner, he raced number one for the Amons. It is Don Irvin in the number one X machine. So he's already got a leg up on the competition here tonight. The first winner in the Amons here at Arizona Speedway, Snowbird Class. In the air, he raced number two and the number three. Brad Whitfield was on the pole. He's not going to be the first one into turn number one. That's going to be the 55 AK of Scott Sluka. In the third position, the number 90 machine. That's driven by Jason Bulio. Number seven, Marlon Seidler. The 13 machine, driven by Jeff Shepard. As you see, battles continuing between the third and fourth place car. As well as fourth and fifth. Tommy, that 75 machine, a lot of talk about Spencer Wilson this week in contact ahead of him. That's a battle for the transfer spot. That 75 machine, Spencer Wilson, the defending race winner. Looking to do it again this year. And he has to do quite a bit of traveling to get here. He's got to do quite a bit of traveling to get into the A main event. That's right. Also in this field, rounding it out, is the number 30K machine. And he's been having a handling issue. You can also smell. Yeah, that's Justin Day. If you had smell a vision something's <laughs> heating up, whether it be brakes or... Well, they just came out with 4K TVs. I imagine the next thing to follow would be smell vision And we'd be the first to get it. <laughs> One of the first cameras, no matter what the cost. Yeah, Wilson had to back up his turn number four. He's at risk of losing another position right now. But your leader in the 55, Saluka, just taking it nice and easy right now. His bid to make it in the A-Man event. Looking all right. Then we have the number seven machine, Seidler. Actually, we're going to have a battle for the lead right now out of turn number two. Seidler goes to the inside. That number seven machine's looking to take it over. So Luke is still in a safe position as far as making it into the A-Man event. Everywhere else, we're pretty single file. So, Tommy, some work going to have to be done by defending race winner Wilson in that, well, that 75 car. That's just going to make it all the more exciting now, isn't it? It will. Seidler crosses the line. He'll win the heat. Following him in the A-Man event is the 55 machine of Sluka. Sluka, you saw him get wide out of turn number two. That allowed Seidler to make his move. Here live on XN and a low budget TV. Let's go through the starting lineup. Heat three, the four TW Tim Ward, which is outside the number 41, George Franzman. The number 62 starts inside of row number two, Hunter Marriott, and the 99S of Sean Strand, the 198 Cody Miller, the 14 of David Caldwell, and rounding out the field, the number 18Z of Zane DeVilbus. See them getting ready to take the one to go before we go racing. Maybe not. We're looks like we're inspecting a bit into the track. Maybe trying to correct a rut from forming or something. So, so what have you what have you learned about Arizona Speedway so far? Um, I think the biggest thing that I've learned is that this is not just an oval track, dirt track. They've got quite a lot going on here behind us, which you can't see because it's dark, but behind us over to our left outside of turns number three and four is a moto motocross type track. And that's that's actually what this place started out as. Exactly. Open to the public, so anybody with a motor, uh, motorcycle or 
who knows what else. Maybe and, they have yeah. UTV type racing out here. And another little bit of history for you. The stands were sitting slash standing on. Historical. Historical grandstands were standing on. Yeah, these uh, used to be at Manzanita. So very cool. See this track. I, I would guess probably took off after Manzanita closed. Well, the need for racing, stock car type racing, out in Arizona area, and it it picked up quite other tracks, grew up as well. Also, outside of turn number two, where you're looking, is a sand track track, and then behind the billboards, <laughs> yes, is a drag strip. It's a mud bog track. Okay, so, close enough. Mud pit. Yeah. So <laughs> this place does more than just. The Snowbird Classic, that's for sure. Getting ready for heat number three, Snowbird Classic IMCA Modified. Cape Fear Island, number 18, and starting in the back. Field at the ready, flagman at the ready. We go green. Tim Ward leads the field. Top two transfer, that does not leave any room for error. And you see the battle area right now. Marriott to the inside takes the second spot away from the 41 of Franzman. Franzman now trying to hold off the number one machine. And there it is, battle for second. Oh, Lungar having trouble out of turn number two. That's Kept number it going straight. David Caldwell, yeah, he got a big bobble out of turn number two. 98, I, I apologize, Cody Miller. I called him the number one, and I think you can see why. Oh, but you see him? Crank the wheels to the left. And I, the I've seen that straight. in every heat race so far. One car has that issue. Looks like you're the slick spot forming there. Yeah, he might be having an additional problem. Uh, could he have a flat? I'm not sure. It's like the right front's just not doing its job. He's gathering it up, having to adjust his driving style. Single file now. The number four, T.W. Tim Ward, extending his lead over Hunter Marriott from Missouri. The number 62 driver, yeah, first if, one in the pits. If we gave, yeah, if we gave a trophy to the first person to get here, it would have been that car right there. Brand new vehicle he's driving here, a Rage chassis. Brand new car, top to bottom. They're excited to start this year with that machine. They're going to be out here for five weekends in a row in Arizona. So they're basically changing their zip code track to track. And nothing really else happening on track as far as positions wise. We might see some lap traffic. The 14 of Caldwell. And the white flag is out for your leader. This could get a little bit interesting. Caldwell again slipping up. So we've got some drivers with some suspension work to do as they head into the B main event. Checkered flag flies for the number four TW of Tim Ward. We've got a car around that is the number 198 of Cody Miller. Iron Man in turn number two. Yeah, we talked to Cody at the pits and he was really saying that at an event like this, it's all about just making that main event. That's, about, that's what it's, it's all about. It's luck. It's what it is. You know what's interesting, though, is that when I was in the pits, I actually saw Batman climb out of that car. Did you really? I saw Batman climb out of the Iron Man car. And Batman was like 10 years old. No joke. Mm. So maybe stunt driver. Maybe. Green flag in the air for heat race number four. Salo in the number 7K machine, our pole sitter for this one. But jumping to that lead, the 3X of Jason Breeze. Some, it looks like they avoided contact. Here we go into turn number three. Oh, you can see the battle for the transfer spot heating up already. Solo Get him while you can. And that 7K machine holds on to the transfer spot. Position number two, right behind him though, the Hornet's Nest. Here comes the 74 machine. I think I just lied. Good battle. You're right. No, it's 74 to the inside. 7K. Taxi. Garrett Funk in the 74 machine. Battle for the transfer spot. Sallow slips up, and that's going to allow maybe two drivers to get by. The other one be... Oh! The first yellow flag of the year, ladies and gentlemen. For low-budget TV, yeah. Give that 
is. 74, a trophy. That was it. That was it right there. Now, that was the first spin of the year. Yeah, there's a lot of records that just broke. And everybody tuning in right now, you are a part of our history here Welcome on XAN Welcome. Low Budget TV. You're basically family now. Look at that. What a remarkable machine that just brought out the very first caution of the year. Yeah, I talked to Funk a little bit earlier. They, uh, they were getting that car ready. That one of our later entries, which is one of the reasons that he wasn't on the initial heat race lineup. Correct. Um, but that move, Salo was able to move back to the second position. The 71 machine that you saw in the middle of all of that action, the 71 AZ of Tyler Meckel. And then uh, the driver with a great avoiding plan, the Mike Weddlestat. That so, was a good job. He had that thing all the... He had to crank that thing straight at the wall. And he made it work. He made it work. The number nine rounds out the field, and that would be Mike Masters. And Masters got a lady riding with him on his doors. Take a look here. There she is. Now, what I found interesting with all of uh, what was going on, as we have a battle for the lead and a battle for third, that 71 AZ machine, Meckle up to the lead, and Salo trying to hold off. Oh, contact! Salo avoids in the wall. Another one of those scenarios where the wheels crank all the way to the left. That one, oh, it's happening again. I was gonna say, yeah, that looks like it could be a flat tire. Salo having issues. Weddlestack gonna move into the third position and maybe have enough time to put the pressure on the number three He's of Breeze. He's on a mission right here. Gotta be spot looking for the transfer. Yep. Now I was gonna say one driver was on the lineup for this heat, did not make it. We have Salo spinning it out over in turns one and two, and the second yellow flag of 2015. See, this is where we start a roll here. We're gonna keep track all year long, I bet. I wonder what the end of the year. The tally's finally. I bet. Come I up. bet we'll hit 30 cautions by the end of the year. Maybe at the end of this weekend. Salo in that 7K machine was able to restart, but pulling it into the pits. That car is having possible suspension issues. They have time to fix it, though, before we get into the main event action. And I'm sure they'll take full advantage of their time. So Meckel, our leader, back to this transfer spot battle. Only a few laps to go. We're going to tally up the car counts, but as far as the other part of the question, what all has been run, we've had a dwarf car heat race, yep. and you are right now in the middle, almost towards the end of the IMCA modified heat race. And that's all you've missed, if you're just tuning in now. Yep, the uh, dwarf car heat race was a calm one. White flag in the air for Meckel. Breeze looking good to hold on to that transfer spot. Weddle set. Holding on to the third position. And then the last car on the field, Mike Masters, in the number nine. And Tommy, you mentioned uh, he has a passenger. He sure does. Two ladies on each door. <laughs> Checkered flag for Meckel. And we still have one more heat race to go. And I realize actually Garrett Funk was on the next page. Here we go. Heat race number five, the last heat for the A mods. The 65 Tim Palmer leads the field to the green. The number 009 of Dave Liversedge. The L8 machine of Brian Schultz. 13 Gene Freeman. 19 SB Lance Marie. The 61 of Kenny Hawkins and Nick Gann in the 55. Round out your field. That 61 machine is doing work right now. Up the 19 to the inside, side by side, and the 65 around in front of the field, and collects one other. That could have been major. I was going to say, well, from what I was seeing, I was expecting a lot worse. Yeah. I'd say a lot of drivers made it out of there unscathed. We go green for the restart. The late car is leading. How about that, Brian Schultz? car that you saw pulling? No, but it would go well with that. 19 SB on a mission except for out of turn number four. He has no traction and loses the time that he gained in one and two. Take a look at your leader. Schultz getting great drive. 
drive out of the corner. Lance Marie in the second spot. These two going straight into the A main event. The rest having to work their way through, according to the Arizona Speedway officials. The 6T1 of Kenny Hawkins in the third spot. And the Taco Bell Live Moss modified. Nick Gann trying uh, to get some air conditioning. I think he's just saluting. Could be doing that. Or doing uh, the, the wave, you know, the princess well, wave. he's also letting everybody know the yellow flag's out. <laughs> he, he, is doing that yellow, he is the yellow flag. <laughs> he's literally waving it right now. He's the, uh, the roaming flag man. <laughs> oh, man. Are you? So we're getting some answers here on our Facebook page. Oh, he's sweet. That's what we love. Le Late Machine out front taking the green and the white. One lap shootout. And it's not so much a battle for the transfer position as it is for the lead. Late, he's got him covered. Brian Schultz and the LA Machine will take the checkered flag and he raced number five for the Amons. The 19 SB coming home in the second spot of Lance Marie. These two moving on into the A, the rest. And I have some more racing to do. <laughs> All right, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> the green flag is out, ladies and gentlemen. Surprise! I told you they are not wasting any time here tonight. Wow. Sorry about the missing the start there, everybody. We were not ready, as you can see. 23 car clip in the wall. Our leader, the number 47 machine, Darren Only. Only. In the second spot, the 78 of Kevin Parker, 15 machine driven by Kyle Williams, driving dad's car here tonight. The 23 of Chuck Gronke. Oh, oh doggy. And rounding out the field, the 42 machine of Ian Smeltzer. And battle for the third position. It's going to send the 15 machine around. Single car incident, though I think he's going to hit the wall. Going to have to put it in reverse. And we keep on going. Wow, do you see that? They caught us. They got us, man. All we did was just rotate who was filming, who was announcing. <laughs> and they jumped us on the ring. We'll, we'll be ready next it. time. Bring it on, Arizona Speedway. Yeah, we're going to be ready now. <laughs> I was like, man, these are some mad pace laps. So, Olney leader. He's pure stocks out here. Uh, just a little bit ago, I believe it was two weeks ago, they had their bomber enduro yeah. out at this racetrack. New Year's, New Year's Day enduro that was rescheduled to the next day. But that looked pretty fun. I think there's a YouTube video of that. There goes first place. Here's your second spot. And these cars are screaming, man. They say pure stock, but they're not pure. These are... Uh, that's one thing I've learned quickly about this track, is it's a fast track. It is. Big 3 8 mile. Some good banking on this. And on it's these not cars. very forgiving. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, white flag already out only. Closing in on the 15 machine of Kyle Williams. Williams got around earlier in the race. And the 
the 47 is going to cruise to a win here in this heat race, the first of two for the Pure Stocks. Got one around in turn number two. It's the going. big one. Keeps it going. Well, maybe not. Takes out a light pole Keeps or something. Keeps it cruising. The 42 machine. Now they're waving the yellow flag out this time. So we're going to be able to continue with this one in just a second. Ready and here we go. Heat race number two for the Pure Stocks, David Jones and the 33Y. Who wasn't even planning on being here starts on the pole on his outside 76, Justin Hara. 57J, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Johnson. What? Not, not the six-time champion. I don't know. He when we when he introduced, he introduced himself. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did say that. Well, then he's changed in appearance. No, it's just the makeup they maybe, wear. Maybe. Yeah, maybe the makeup. The 13H. Glenn Hokison. Hokanson. I gotta remember that ends in the middle of it. The 46 Mark Matson in the 70. Danielle Meckel. And we're getting a grasp on these names, so we apologize for the ones that are tuning in that know each and every one of these drivers and are laughing at us. You should laugh at us because we've never been here before. Good battle for the lead here. So Tommy, this 33 machine. He last night was racing a different car at a different track. An IMCA stock car. And now he's going for the lead out of turn number two to the inside and makes a move. Uh-oh, trouble over, wow. And there's the wall there. <laughs> Gonna have to put it in reverse. This will bring out the yellow for a restart here. And uh, we wanted to mention that not only did he race last night, is he racing tonight? Yes. He's going to be racing at Phoenix International Raceway tomorrow. Tomorrow night in a cup car. Or I don't know about tomorrow night, but he'll be doing the uh, the racing experience out there. Because I made a joke that he, that car was an old Winston Cup car. And he's like, funny you mention it. Yeah. So David Jones, he's going to be a busy man all weekend. Seeing him busy here tonight. Here we go. Green flag for the restart. And a great restart at that, Justin Hara. But he's getting pressure by Jones in the 33. 13 in the third spot of Hokinson. Oh boy. Really, I mean, we are in t-shirts and jeans in the middle of Arizona. Fantastic weather out here, and now we see why a bunch of drivers from the Midwest come out to Arizona for January and February. We have drivers as far as Alaska racing here this weekend. Battle for the lead in the Pure Stock Heat race number two. Good battle at that. Here comes the 33 wide. David Jones to the inside has a nose ahead of Hera into turn number three. Side by side through turns number three and four. And Jones has nothing to lose this weekend. No. I mean, he won't be racing here tomorrow night, so he might as well leave it all out on the line tonight. The more side by side they are, the closer that Hokinson can close in on this battle, make it a three car battle for the lead. White flag is out. Who's it going to be? A lap from now, taking the checker. You think this is the main event? It looks like it is, and might as well be David Jones to the inside, working that inside groove to the inside of Hera in the 76. Takes the lead down the back straightaway. Hera throws it into turn number three. Jones with the bobble. Who's it going to be out of turn number four? It is the number 33 uh -huh. Y of David Jones. Takes it at the stripe. More so out of number two. So that goes to show though that outside line definitely can carry that momentum it out of sure turn can. number four and can make the difference. Uh, something to keep an eye on tonight. Green flag is in the air. So the first of the X mods, B mods, sport mods, whatever you'd like to call them, that's what they are. This 81 machine, who just jumped the lead, I'm going to spell his name. Ow! A little bit of contact, maybe some trouble for you later. Shumai. Shumai. That last name is spelled C-Z-U-M-A-J. That's not a password to your Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I 
battle for the lead. Once again here, the number two machine, Nolan Morrow, gonna take it over. Good field. I mean, look at these cars oh, all beautiful. over this track. The C11 machine, Chris Caldwell, looking at the inside, the 57 CT, also in the middle of this mix, Chris Toth. Send in fourth, he started adding last, the 26 of Trevor Miller. These cars will not have a B main, all these cars will make it to the A. Schumai now sits in the fifth position, battle for second is now on tap. Top also four on the screen, top three now. Trying to keep an eye on everything. Yeah, the 28 of Jim Skaggs, he just out of turn two, had to blow up just a little bit, lost a couple positions. 51 machine, David Farley took one of those positions. The 20 AZ of Chuck Black took the other and rounding out the field. I believe we had a car pull it off. It was a car that had a little bit of issues there. The 54 AZ of Lance White. Trying to keep his eye on the third place battle. I think it's going to be brewing up here. You Trevor see Miller. now. 26 to the inside. So Miller trying to make something happen on Toth. And Miller, he has been chipping away at third place for a while. Miller driving that 26 machine. Toth in the 57. Miller looking to try a different line, but it's going to send him around out of turn number two. Technically not all the way around. But that's going to be yeah, that's how he wanted to finish this heat race. White flag is in the air for Morrow. Some good racing here with the X Mods. Kind of a, a good showing of what to expect this weekend. Checkered flag for Morrow. The C11 machine of Caldwell and the 57 CT of Toth round out your top three. Really good crowd. Take a look at this crowd here on Saturday night. And that's, that's another thing that's throwing me off. We've done them before, but I'm like, oh yeah, it's it's Saturday. Usually we're used to starting these shows on a Friday night. Caleb says, Missouri. Very cool. Well, thank each and every one of you for allowing us in your homes. We go green. For next oh boy. Heat number two. Some bump drafting into turn number one. Russ Coffrey lead at the number 88. In the second spot, the number two of 2J, Jason George. 44, Eric Weinmill at the 22. Robert Workmeister, the 18, Jay Robinson. 223, the 223. Numbered car, Cole Peterson, 7G, Dennis Gates. Harland Moorhart, the 17, and rounding out the field, Eric Shaw in the 23 ST. We see some trouble in turn number two. Yeah, just one car getting it around. The 44 had nowhere to go, and then uh, the 18. 18. Just wanted to be involved. Jay Robinson kind of looped it over there. Yeah, our 22 Miller. machine, you can look right on the right rear. That car caught the wall on exit of turn number four on the last lap. Exactly where the other car is at all so that was exciting. I uh, wanted to mention that the ADA machine of Ruskoff, the only driver that we can say that we knew into this event. That's awesome. It's awesome that they drove up here from Santa Maria, California. Yeah. But also, it's awesome that there's all these fresh new modifieds and faces that we get to see. The 18 parked on the front straightaway for a second. Might be getting told off the track. Could be a one and done ruling out here for caution. If you're involved. Off leads away. Austin Ruskoff in the number 88C. Right on the tailgate or the back bumper is that 22 of Workmeister. He's starting to peel the right side of his spoiler from that wall contact, and that's going to spin him out. All that down for us in turns one and two. Plagued him. <laughs> and we've got a great battle out of turn number two. Ruskov extending his lead out front, 88C. Pretty good size lead over the 223 machine of Cole Peterson. Yeah, he definitely was the beneficiary of the 22 machine going around. You see the 223 having to hold on to it on exit of turn four. 
Peterson in the 223, getting some pressure behind Harlan Moorhart in the 17. Almost clipped. I think your hearing aid's going back. Yeah, I gotta put some batteries in it. My bad. I knew I was gonna come out here and let it rip, so. Holy guacamole. Hey, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? I guess so. Yeah, that's the, that's the track audio. I'm enjoying this crank it up section on XM. I don't think anyone else is. Okay, all right. <laughs> Either that, hey, we're close to Area 51, too. So. <laughs> Ruskoff opening up his lead even more. He heads into turn number one, and your second place driver is now in turn number one. Time of the 223 machine pulling it to the infill. Looks like something broke up with the steering. Peterson having an issue here. He's right in front of the record. White flag out for Austin Ruskoff. He's dealing with some lap traffic. The number 23 machine. I think we have transformers here or something. Eric Shaw, 23 ST, side by side. Not for long. Ruskoff powers down the back straightaway. Into turn number three and takes the heat race number two victory for the X Mods here on the first day of the Snowbird Classic here at X Hands. Production of the Snowbird. Well, very, very cool. Uh, so next up, uh, according to our sheet, Should be the dwarf cars, maybe. Actually, actually, Tommy, before we do that, we need to sign off our heat race video on YouTube. Everybody, thank you for watching. We're going to be posting highlights as well as all the other fun stuff here on our YouTube channel yep. of the main event racing action. This is part number one of two complete shows here at Arizona Speedway, Snowbird Classic. Thank you all for watching. Up next, low budget TV DVDs. You can find us right here on Facebook or YouTube. Get a hold of us now if you're interested in the DVD.